Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Skylar Reacts. Today, we got Queen's very own Freddie Mercury last vocal recorded and last words. All right, it's the first time I'm checking it out. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, like, subscribe, join the fam, and yeah, let's get it. Freddie's last vocal recording and last words. Freddie Mercury is one of the best singers of all time. The rock legend has sung some of the most influential lyrics of the 1900s. Facts. But what were the final words that Freddie spoke? Let's look at the legends behind Freddie's last words and the last song he ever recorded. R.I.P. Between studio recordings and bonus tracks, Freddie Mercury wrote and performed an incredible 70 songs over the course Damn. of 21 years with the British rock band Queen. Okay, over 21 years, okay, but 70 songs? Jeez. The final full album he produced with the band from start to finish was Innuendo, which released the same year he died in 1991. Damn. While this was his final full-length project with the band, Freddie and the rest of Queen had finished recording the songs for Innuendo long before the album dropped. I wonder if he knew he was dying at that point. Like, wonder what, like period of time like he realized like oh shit like i'm actually dying dropped in stores so while innuendo was the last album freddie released while he was still alive the superstar actually appears on one last album made by the band made in heaven which came out four years after he died Damn. you can hear freddie mercury's last vocal recording on this album Freddie's final vocal. Damn, that's sad though. Like the like the name of the album being like that's his last album he's on. Damn, that's crazy. And it came out. What did it say? Like four years after he passed away. Shit. Recording was actually the lesser known song called Mother Love, that was co-written with Brian May. May was the architect behind Queen. He got the group together. So without him, Freddie may have never risen to fame. It's touching to know the friends worked together on Freddie's last vocal performance during his final years when his health was failing. In spite of Freddie's struggle with AIDS, Damn. he kept on belting incredible songs right up until the end. Freddie and Brian recorded Mother Love over three days in the month of May from the 13th to- Bro, you see how we look here versus like when he was like super ill and dying? Look at that, I don't even look like the same person. Bro, take care of your help, bro. Like, God damn, look at him then and then look at him like, cheese. Incredible songs right up until the end. Freddie and Brian recorded Mother Love over three days in the month of May from the 13th to the 16th, just a short time before Freddie would go knocking on heaven's door. Mm. In the years after Freddie's passing, Brian May has spoken out about the process of writing that historic final song. Brian and Freddie wrote together and then would split off on their own for a while to write in solitude before reconvening. Then, they'd combine different parts or cut out different lines as the song began to take form. During their writing session, Freddie seemed almost hurried. He was somewhat detached and ominous compared to his usual fun-loving self. Brian said Freddie told him to write me stuff. I know I don't have very long. Keep writing me words. Keep giving me things I will sing. This. Damn, so he knew. He was like, I don't have very long. Imagine just knowing that you're dying. And you're just trying to, like, knock out all the stuff we love to do. That's, damn, bro. Just knowing, like, you're dying. You don't have much time left. And you're still trying to do the things you love. That's, yeah. Then, oh, you man. can do what you like with it afterwards. You know, finish it off. Brian would write short lines and snippets on whatever scraps of paper they had lying around. Freddie then sung each line three times. During these sessions, they didn't know what they were going to use for the final track, but Mercury wanted the band to have as many takes and as many options as possible so they could craft Mother Love when he wasn't around. Mm. Except, all this precaution and foresight took its toll on the sickly Mercury. When it came time to sing the final verse of the song, Freddie told May, I'm not up to this, and I need to go away and have a rest. I'll come back and finish it off. Yeah, that don't even sound him saying that. If I was the person I was like he was talking to, I'd have been like, "You sure you good, bro? What you mean you want to take a rest?" Because usually when people say that, because you know the saying like you know when you're is that time. So just like yeah, I'm gonna go to rest and like not wake up again, like type shit. Freddie never came back. So get off. But Freddie and I need to go away and have a rest. I'll come back and finish it off. But Freddie never came back. 
down. So, how did Brian May and the rest of Queen finish off the track without Freddie's final lines? The band scrapped the original plan, and instead, they sampled Freddie's improv vocals that were recorded during Queen's historic concert on July 12, 1986, at Wembley Stadium. They combined that sample with the intro lines of One Vision and Tie Your Mother Down. Hmm. After Freddie's final verse in the song, his close friend and bandmate Brian May sang the final verse that Freddie never got a chance to record. Brian's vocal sounded absolutely devastated, and this was one of the most heart-wrenching moments in Queen's catalog. Oh man. As the song draws to a close, the band sampled a little bit of every Queen song ever recorded up till that point. It's like it doesn't it wouldn't sound the same without that, like, you know, without Freddie, it just won't be there. It won't have like that impact, just not hearing his voice on the track. It just like, yeah, it's not gonna be the same and played them together at super speed through a physical tape machine. Included in this amazing montage is a cover of Going Back. The original Going Back was written by Carol King and Jerry Goffin, and Freddie covered it way back in 1972 as a B-side to I Can Hear Music. Mm. They also included covers like the one from the Ronettes that were sung by Larry Lurex in this segment. Did Queen spoil Freddie's legacy by including this Larry guy in his final Yo, Freddy, where's the rest of your clothes at, bro? No <laughs> send off? Not quite. See, Larry Lurex was actually a pseudonym that Mercury used prior to his work with Queen. The song ends with a baby crying. Some fans have speculated the crying is Freddy himself, but mm. film wasn't as readily accessible when he was born. The use of the crying is more for artistic symbolism than anything else. While the crying at the end of Mother Love represents Freddie's first vocals, what were the final words he ever spoke? This one is actually wrapped in some controversy. It's unknown who first spread some rumors of Brown Freddie's final words, but some sites will say that Freddie's final words were weird things like pee pee. This is probably just the internet being the internet. Wait, what? <laughs> it's final words with pee pee. Come on, bro. Who's, who's out here trolling? Cause there's no way it's. I mean. He is kind of, so I won't be surprised. I mean, <laughs> it's were weird things like pee pee. This is probably just the internet being the internet, since there's no evidence for outlandish claims like this. The tale of Freddie's final words actually changes depending on who you ask. Everyone who was close with the singer had their own final moments with them. Let's take a look at the first hand accounts of the final words Freddie ever spoke. Mary Austin shared her account of Freddie's last days during an interview in 2013. Mary was Freddie's ex and lifelong friend. The couple were destined to be soulmates. Ex? Wait, Freddie bisexual? Wait, what? <laughs> Mary was Freddie's ex and lifelong friend. The couple were destined to be soulmates. But Freddie's openness about his sexuality drove a rift between them romantically. You think? While they shared a close bond before Queen's success and even in his final moments, the semblance of a scar resurfaced. Austin and Mercury were watching a video of his last onstage performance with Queen when Freddie said, To think I used to be so handsome. It's a strange line to leave on. She said the line upset her, so maybe she left to process her emotions and then never got the chance to come back for a final goodbye. That's how I was saying, though, like, looking at him, like, during his prime versus, like, while he's sick, it looked like two completely different person, bro. It, he doesn't even look recognizable. So, I, when he said that, I feel it, bro. Like, yeah, it doesn't even look like the same person whatsoever. Well, most of the time, we think of final words as those spoken by someone. Some argue that Freddie's final words were those written to his friend and fellow music legend Elton John. In Elton John's book titled Love is the Cure, On Life, Loss, and the End of AIDS, he told the world that Freddie had prepared a Christmas gift for Elton before he passed away. Along with this gift, Freddie wrote a note. This note was unveiled after Mercury had passed, and it read, Dear Sharon, I thought you'd like this. Love, Melina. Happy Christmas. You might be thinking, Sharon, who's that? Well, as a running joke between the singers, Elton and Freddie would make up goofy names for each other, and this silly note may have been the final words that were ever shared with someone. 
down. Then there were his last words in a public appearance, which were, thank you, good night. Freddy kept the paparazzi at bay for a long time near the end of his road, as the scathing headlines about his declining health made his mental health even worse. The reports were so bad mm. that Freddy stopped his radiation treatment early just to avoid the public eye. These last words in a public presentation were spoken during Queen's acceptance speech for the 1990 Brit. It just sounds like Freddy was just too tired to continue to fight, bro. They keep him pushing himself so hard trying to like, you know, finish up like or giving his his band the tools he need to like con to like finish the album or whatnot. And it it seems like it turned to the point where he does like exhausted. Because he's doing all that, still getting treatment, radiation treatment, still doing this and that, still dealing with paparazzi, the fans, interviews, this and that. At some point, the man just went to rest and, you know, he just stopped all the treatments. He just, like, basically gave up. Like, he did what he had to do while he was still alive and, you know, write his notes and whatever. And he just, yeah, he just want to give up. Like, he doesn't recognize himself anymore, people. He didn't want to be in public. So, at this point... It does, like, depression and all that. He just wanted to go, bro, at that point. Just to avoid the public eye. These last words in a public presentation were spoken during Queen's acceptance speech for the 1990 Brit Awards. Brian May said much of the thank yous and so ons, but just like the end of Mother Love, Freddie stepped up right at the end to add his charm with that goodnight closer. Another important last moment with Freddie was his final music video. This powerful moment is near the top of Queen's most heartfelt and touching performances. The video for These Are the Days of Our Lives was recorded in 1991, just a few months before Freddie passed away. At the end of the video, Freddie looks directly at the camera as he delivers the final line of the song, I still love you. Then there's Freddie Mercury's last performance with Queen, Damn. the one he was watching with Mary Austin just before he passed away. Queen's last live show with Mercury was in 1986, titled A Night of Summer Magic that took place in Hertfordshire. The band closed with their second most famous track, We Are the Champions, which closed with the line, No time for losers, cause we are the champions. By many accounts, the final person to meet with Freddie was his longtime personal assistant, Peter Freestone. Peter recalled his final moments with Freddie, saying, The final time I saw him, he took my hand and said, thank you. I didn't know if he had decided that was it. He was going. There was nothing to stay alive for. I don't know if he... That's what I was saying. At some point, he was just like, I just had enough. Thank you. And yeah, he just, you know, dotting his eyes, crossing his T's before he passed away. You feel me? That's what he was doing, in my opinion. He was thanking me for everything over the 12 years or just for that last shift. I suppose it doesn't really matter. But the last time I saw him, he was relaxed and prepared. The last oh, words Freddie ever said to his longtime assistant, Peter Freestone, were thank you. After that day, Freddie fell into a coma. Mary, Freddie's friend Dave Clark, and Freddie's lover Damn. Jim Hutton were by his side when he passed away on November 23, 1991. In the end, Freddie was around his fellow friends, and it's fitting that his final track was co-written with the man who helped found the band and elevate Freddie to immortal status. Speaking of co-written songs, did you hear about the time Freddie almost collaborated with Michael Jackson? Oh my god. Imagine Freddie and Michael Jackson on the same track. Oh my god, bro. We'll be making a video diving into that crazy story soon, so subscribe to the channel to get notified as soon as it comes out. Remember to like the video and leave a- Anyway, that's it for this, um... This video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments if y'all enjoyed this video and if you want more. Obviously, there's more to react to about Freddie and Freddie Mercury. So let's let me know in the comments and hope y'all have a blessed day. See you guys for the next one.